Thank you for joining us here this morning. Our top focus, India-Canada diplomatic relations have hit an all-time low. India has strongly dismissed claims made by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, especially after it withdrew its High Commissioner and other diplomats from Canada. In a tit-for-tat move, Canada expelled several Indian diplomats, which prompted India to respond by expelling six Canadian diplomats in return, that is. Canada has countered India's allegations, stating that they have found evidence suggesting Indian diplomats were involved in clandestine activities and gathering information on criminal activities linked to the Indian government. Now, this tension that is escalated when Canada designated Indian High Commissioner Sanjay Kumar Varma and other diplomats as persons of interest in the investigation into the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Najjar. India has labelled these latest claims from Canada as preposterous. In fact, New Delhi has argued that Trudeau's comments have been a part of a broader strategy to malign India for political gain, further even calling out his naked interference in India's internal affairs. Listen in. When we started to understand through intelligence agencies that India was possibly, if not probably, behind Nijar's killing, the killing of a Canadian on Canadian soil last summer. Our first choice, our first actions were to reach out, yes, to our Five Eyes partners, but also to the government of India to say, we know this has happened. Work with us to fix this. We don't want to be having this fight, but obviously the killing of a Canadian on Canadian soil is not something that we can ignore as a country. Over this past week, when the RCMP reached out to its law enforcement counterparts in India, there was a path where we could have worked together to ensure accountability and changes and, and you know, steps that would have resulted in keeping Canadians safe, because that is our top priority. India, the Indian government, rejected those advances, rejected our attempts to find some way through this, and that brought us to this point of having to disrupt the chain of operations that go from dip Indian diplomats here in Canada to criminal organizations to direct violent impacts on Canadians right across this country. All right, we're also picking up uh, breaking inputs on that front. In fact, India-Canada standoff over Nijjar's murder that we just told you. Now we're given to understand, beg your pardon, that Justin Trudeau speaks to UK Prime Minister Starmer. In fact, they discuss India's campaign against Canadians and they talk about safety of Canadian citizens. Understand. Right, that's the latest that we're given to understand as far as um, the big breaking input on that front. Amidst the India-Canada standoff over Nijjar's murder, that is, Justin Trudeau has spoken to UK Prime Minister Starmer. In fact, they have discussed India's campaign against Canadians and they in fact talk about safety of Canadian citizens. Let me take this development across to Rishabh Pratap, my colleague. Rishabh, very good morning. Uh, first things first, uh, with what we're looking at essentially here, uh, like we were speaking earlier as well, the relations between the two nations now indicate that it has hit rock bottom. Uh, the relationship between India and Canada has hit rock bottom and coming to the development that has come in that uh, the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has spoken to his UK counterpart Mr. Stammer uh, and what is uh, Justin Trudeau trying to do here? 
after alleging uh, last year as well we saw him calling various uh, counterparts from us to uae to uh, you know um, uh, europe everywhere he made calls and tried to speak and rake up the india issue with them as well and he has begun that once again remember the stammer's government had just come in it's been hardly half a year uh, that, that uh, uk new government has taken charge both the parties are liberal uh, as they call themselves and uh, uh, just need to feel that in stammer hmm. he'll get an ally against india remember uh, as of now there hasn't been much of international commentary on india canada uh, as we have seen and uh, Justin Trudeau wants to uh, get the edge of early starter and get narrative built in Canada's favor is what we are looking at. But now, having said that, we haven't had any statement. Even uh, the readout from UK uh, Prime Minister's office has not been released yet. That shows that uh, the world is uh, watching uh, with uh, uh, with patience. Uh, not sure. how to react to india canada allegations given that canada being a part of g7 being part of uh, you know western world has been alleging on india but india's global influence now is not that of 70s or 80s when uh, the senior trudeau uh, for father of justin trudeau would make allegations against india and world will rally behind mm. and hence we are seeing a complete radio silence right now from the global leaders on this issue remains to be seen how things unfold from here Right, Rishabh. In fact, you were drawing perspective, of course, about the latest development as well as far as how Justin Trudeau uh, did speak to the UK Prime Minister. But just to draw things into perspective, Rishabh, uh, more so because, of course, you've also closely followed the developments as far as Indo-Canada relations are concerned. With what we're essentially looking at and the manner in which it's panning out, how does one read into this geopolitically speaking as well? Well. Uh... See, there are two things: domestic and international. And uh, here, uh, hmm. the major reason that the Justin Trudeau government has been after India is because of the domestic compulsions. Remember, just last month, NDP, who were the major partner of Justin Trudeau in the government, walked out of the alliance. And now, Justin Trudeau fear that a the, his acceptability uh, in uh, in uh, Canada is all time low. The popularity meter says that he even 20 percent, uh, hardly 20 percent, uh, Canadians uh, suggest that they would like. to see Justin Trudeau as prime minister post these elections in 2025 and Justin Trudeau believe that by doing what he is doing he could woo the voters of NDP and that might help him uh, sail through the next election and that's the reason that we see an aggressive posturing by Canadian government A B uh, we also need to understand that uh, uh, Canada hasn't had that much of say on international uh, forums and A B G7 G20 the way India has started uh, creating its influence has asserting its uh, its influence after G20 G7 uh, or uh, you know be uh, global south uh, Canada do believe that you know uh, Canada's prominence is being overshadowed by other countries and that's the reason that they are also trying to ensure that they uh, you know if narrative is built in their favor and countries rally behind canada the influence can be managed that way having said that uh, even yesterday when uh, just right rishab uh, i'd have to interject you there but for the moment thank you very much for getting us not only the latest um, input but also overall drawing perspective as far as where relations between the two nations are concerned but for now uh, We we'll leave the conversation at that. Let's continue to tell our viewers that in another bizarre allegation that is made by Canada, they have linked Indian government to the Bishnoi gang. However, once again, the absurd claims are coming without any evidence. That is, but what exactly has been stated? Let's listen into that. It is targeting the South Asian community, but. We, what we've seen is there's there's specific targeting of uh, pro-Khalistan um, uh, elements, the use of uh, organized crime uh, elements, and I will say uh, what we and it's been publicly uh, attributed and uh, and claimed by uh, one uh, organized crime group in particular, which is the Bishnoi group. Um, so that's what we're seeing uh, here in Canada, and we believe that that group is uh, connected to uh, agents of the government of India.